Hi, hello, when I come and welcome back to yet another episode on your favorite Little Sla YouTube channel. So today in this video, so yeah, as you're seeing, um, it's JMeter. So we are going to discuss about uh, one of the function in JMeter and this will definitely help you uh, in case of, in case we are doing any programming. And in fact, this was uh, a question in many of the interview uh, as well, uh, where uh, the interviewer has asked some real time scenario. Uh, so it, it can be, uh, it, is actually a real time scenario question where the interviewer might ask you how will you do or will you generate uh, a random number so he might ask you this question so uh, this is another uh, notification uh, another question for you so yeah mm, coming back to the uh, interview questions yeah this could be a potential question this has been even asked because uh, in several scenarios people might be telling you that uh, give me a scripting challenge scripting question that has been asked interview so this is a scripting challenge or this is how you might get a question so let's see how to do it and uh, before we move on to this video this is me your son shanmugam i welcome you all to subscribe to our youtube channel please do watch the video till the end you might get a lot of information and uh, please do practice this in your home and uh, don't forget to join my channel and you can get a lot of perks as well you can get a lot of uh, earlier access to the videos and if you have any uh, if you have any one-to-one queries that you have to ask me uh, please do take my one-to-one -one, uh, join a subscription as well and uh, if you have if you want any trainings or if you want any questions if you want to get any clarifications please do uh, join a whatsapp channel and you can whatsapp me as well and yeah with no further delay let's go to the video so firstly uh, to try this so let me add a thread group so that's a very basic one we know so i'm adding a thread group and the thread group i'm going to add a bean uh, sorry uh, jsr223 sampler so uh the question here is like what are we going to open I mean, how are we going to generate a random number right so that that's the question basically and we all know uh we have a tool which is a function helper dialog and we we in fact we were discussing about lots of our other functions uh, i think we have discussed few of the other functions here like the time the time function the time shift so in case if you haven't watched it please do watch the video and then even we watched the file to string where we were able to uh, pass a file to the jdbc and we were able to uh, query that value as well so please do watch all those videos if you haven't watched it and they also were another question potential questions and people many of you i know they're struggling to fix this uh, time shift and the time function bar so please do watch that video you will get a lot of understanding and a lot of knowledge on that so in this one uh, let me uh, we are going to see about the bean shell so by using bean shell we are going to uh, create or we are going to uh, create the random number so this is the function which are going to use the dollar uh, open braces underscore underscore bean shell of and then with the two arguments so let's see how to use it and then uh, for that i have a jsr223 sampler and then the first part here is uh, I'm going to use the bean shell function. So as I have told you, the bean shell function um, uh, to generate a random number between one and hundred. Sorry. So this function uh, where I'm uh, like assigning this value of so any number which is uh, in between uh, one hundred. I mean, starting from one to 100. So I'll be uh, defining that number as a random number. And then the next is I'm going to store the random number in a JMeter variable. Uh, so this is where I'm going to store this variable. So I'm going to convert this to string and then I'm going to store it. And then the third part is I'm going to uh, print it as log.info. So log.info, we all know, it's going to be uh, printed at the, in the log part. And then finally, the last one where I'm going to, sorry, uh, I'm going to select the random number as the response data. So I'm going to save this value, whatever I get the value, I'll go to save into the random number. And then I'm going to print this in a text format. So this is what I'm going to do uh, in terms of the bean shell. So let me just do a quick um, recap of this. So let me just explain it to you real quick. So the first line, uh, which is def random number equals dollar the bean shell function. So this line uses the bean shell, bean shell function um, to execute the snippet of Java code. Sorry, I'm just trying, sorry. Yeah, so snippet of the Java code and import java.util.random imports the random class 
from the Java's standard library. So you have to use this to generate the random number. And then the new random dot next int of 100 plus one creates a new instance of random and generates a random integer between zero to 99 and one shift this range to one to 100. And then this result is assigned to the random number. So that's the first line. And then moving on to the second line. So we're going to store the random number in a JMeter variable. So VARS is a special JMeter variable that allows us to store and retrieve the variables within the JMeter context. So VARS dot put of random number, random number to string, stores the generator random number as a string in a JMeter variable named random numbers. So that's the line two. And then in the third line, the log dot info of random number plus random number logs the random number to the jmeter log file so this step is optional and it is typically used for debugging purposes to ensure the random numbers generated correctly so this again i would say is an option so even i have mentioned it here and then the fourth line the fourth the final part which is sample result dot set response data of random number sets the response data of the current sample result to the random number which is again encoded in utf8 and then the last line, which is sample result dot set data type of sample result dot text specifies that the response data type is text. So overall, the summary, uh, what we are doing is we are generating a code, which is a basically a random number between one and hundred using Java's random class. So it stores this random number in a JMeter variable named random number, and then the random number is logged for the debug debugging purpose in line eight, number eight. And then finally, the random number is set as the response data for the current sample, which can be useful for verification and reporting purposes in your JMeter test plan. Yep, so this is what we are going to do. And then finally, I'm adding a view results tree, which is under the listener, and we'll see what does it do. So let me run this. Hey, yeah, we're supporting, uh, mm -hmm, yes. And in the bin folder, I'm going to save it in a new folder. So this is a bean shell function bean shell dot jmx let me go inside this one and save and yep so here if you see i've got a random number as one let me run it again 16 58 33 yeah so this way you can generate multiple times and even we can try a different controller as well to see how does it work so uh, in some scenarios where you might be asked to print it multiple times so here is that scenario so where what i did is um, i have just one user and then inside the loop controller if i'm making it to like five iterations just for example take for example so what happens is it's it's quite wonderful because uh, the thing here is uh, sorry i just have a while controller let me just uh, make it keep it here and then let me remove this while controller delete remove and let me stop this, clear everything, yeah. So um, I'm just running this for five uh, iterations. So I have, I'm generating a random number. And then it's it's quite uh, interesting because if you see here, for this particular user, it's generating only 51 every time it runs. And there is another quick thing, which is if I'm making it to like two, or like make, I mean, just making it to three users, right? And if I'm running it for three users, what happens is for the first user, it's like 25. For the second user, it's 17, and for the third user, it is 42. So this is another restriction. So you have to make sure that you're using it in the right way, because if you're using this bean shell sampler, what happens is it generates a random number, but it's for one user. So for example, I'm just using three users, but I'm running it for five iterations. So what happens is like for all the five iterations, this JSR223 sampler, which I use, which is mainly the bean shell sampler, which I've used, uh, will generate the same number because it, it's still for the same user. So it generates a random number. So, uh, sorry, the same number as a random number. But when I'm using it for multiple users, it generates a different set of numbers. So this is another restriction, but you have to make sure that you're going overcoming that issue. So now let's try to overcome that issue. So for that, what I'm going to do is I'm going to add another JSR223 sampler. And in that, I'm going to add the code. So the first of it is I'm going to generate a random number. So in fact, I think both these code are inside the same loop controller where we are using the bean shell sampler and then we are using a random generator. And let me add a number to this as well so that you can understand how does it work. So I'm going to add like two. So this is the one which you're going to run for this test. 
uh, and then yeah so this one which uh, will generate a random number between 1 and uh, 100 using jmeter's random function so instead of initial i'm just directly using the random function and then i'm using the next one which is the storing the random number in a jmeter variable so like i told you so i'll generate a random number then i'll uh, store it in a uh, variable and then the third part is i'm going to log the random number for the debugging purpose so this is again an optional one so which is log start info which we all know and then finally the last part which is i'm going to set the random number as the response data so here we are generating a random number and then so one difference is like if we see from the previous one and this one currently so the only difference is we are adding a bean shell sampler the bean shell function but apart from that it's it's again everything is same so we are having a random number and then uh, and again like uh, there are like few changes we have where we are just storing the variable the way we store the variable and then um, the way we print it so here when we are using it through a, a bean shell sampler we can directly print the number but when we are uh, printing using a random number we have to get the number and then we have to paste it so that's that's a, I, I would say a very minor difference and then yep let's run the script so i'm using the same five iterations and then i have the two functions here and then when i run this let's see the magic that is going to create so the first one it's 31 even i'll just open uh, i'll show you all the five uh, five first samples this is for the first user so all the samplers has got only 13 but the random function which we have used creates different numbers for each and every iteration so that's the difference between uh, using the initial sampler for random number and directly the random function so this is all a kind of a difference uh, which we can create so anytime so the thing here is like just have a overall a 360 degree uh, understanding of how these functions work so that you can very well implement whatever you need for that particular thing uh, at for the particular point because you can very well use the bean shell but it's in a different scenario and you can use it a random function directly for a different scenario so i would welcome you just try all these just practice all this so that they'll help you definitely in your keep it as a habit just practice at least one concept a daily so that when once you uh, are into your uh, project or once you get this challenge you can easily crack it so with that i come to an end and i definitely believe this video would be very useful to you so until i meet you in our next video it's bye bye from from Vasan shanugam and your favorite little slide teacher thank you thank you take care and bye bye